hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's your host, internationally recognized comedy soundcast soundcaster, Mark... Hershaw. Mark Hershaw. Hello, gentle listener, and welcome to episode 320 of Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast. As our esteemed announcer Bill Haywatt intoned, I am Mark Hershon, your host for this latest stroll through soundcast land. I am living in Grass Valley, California, which I mentioned a few weeks ago. I moved here from the greater Bay Area, Sausalito to be exact, where the temperatures tend to be a bit cool because of the fog and living so close to the bay. Here in Grass Valley, north of Sacramento in the Sierra Nevada foothills, it gets hot. And it is Labor Day weekend as I'm recording this, and it is 102 degrees right now outside the Nerd Nest, which is not air conditioned. It's the only part of our house that has no air conditioning. And so I have the windows wide open. I've taken down the soundproofing that usually surrounds my microphone. And so you may hear a car go by, one just did. Uh, you might hear birds chirping. They've been screaming most of the day. You might hear a deer walk by. That happens here. But anyway, it's just too damn hot to take those sort of things seriously. So apologies if this is a less than perfect soundcast experience for you, but we endeavor to do what we can. Now, if you happen to miss last week's episode 319 entitled Title Resonance and masterfully curated by my counterpart and co-host Tyson Saner, he played snippets from a trio of soundcast treats, including Not Today Thank You, Strong Songs, and Trashy Trashy. It's still within earshot for you through any of a number of online distribution points should you want to go pick it up, and I would recommend that you do. You can find it on Apple and Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible.com, iHeartRadio, PodBay, PodChaser, Stitcher, and of course, our very own island of misfit toys here on the Soundcast C at SuckatashShow.com. For this week's episode, I have no such bouquet of clippage to share with you because I'm very happy to welcome a special guest in for a chat. This is Christine Blackburn's first actual interview here, even though I've talked to her numerous times in the past as a friend of Succotash. Our first run-in was during the very first Los Angeles Podcast Festival, an event that lasted five years. Well, not the whole festival. They did five of them in a row, or maybe it was six. And then it was eclipsed by some giant corporate entities move to squelch the little guy. Well, we kept running into each other at subsequent fests, and Christine was instrumental in helping to round up various and sundry soundcasters to come join me at the Succotash microphone we had set up. Her first soundcast is just slightly longer running than this one, and it's called Story Worthy. Uh, Started 12 years ago, features guests telling stories in front of a live audience. She's also been running Story Smash, the storytelling game show soundcast. In fact, my most recent guest chatter... Blaine Kapach is a frequent judge on that show, but now she has just launched her newest soundcast called My Life in Three Songs, featuring comedians talking about a trio of songs that heavily influence their life and often careers. Our chat took place a couple of weeks ago, just before My Life in Three Songs debuted on Spotify, so you'll hear us talking about the fact the show is about to drop when, in fact, it is now available. It has dropped. We'll jump into my chat with Christine Blackburn right after this unimportant message from our completely fake sponsor, Henderson's Pants, and the latest word on their new summer stock slacks. Hello, friends, and welcome to the lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Bill Haywatt here to tell you about the latest invention from Henderson's Pants, summer stock slacks. Just like those amazing Broadway shows that leave the great white way to hit the road and make money 
money off the rubes in the flyover states? Henderson summer stock pants look great on the outside, but they're really cheaply made, using the flimsiest of materials and very little attention to detail. They look great on the outside from 20 feet away. Oh, but trust me, these suckers barely hold up past the first wearing. And by first wearing, I'm talking about the try-on in the dressing room. And once you wash them for the first time, <laughs> you can just plan on throwing your brand new Henderson summer stock slacks away. Ultra cheap to make, you'd think Henderson's would pass the savings on to you. But oh my goodness, no, these handsome but useless trousers are just as expensive as our top-of-the-line dress slacks. Originally designed for out-of-towners, yokels, and complete schlemiels, Henderson summer stock slacks are available in little tourist shops wherever trinkets and tchotchkes are sold. That's Henderson's, makers of ephemeral garments and transitory togs since 1354. And now back to the unique permanence of Succotash. Succotash is going great. We're in our 11th year or, well, 11 and a half years now. That's awesome. I really, the stick to itiveness that you have, you know, you've just stayed with it and it's really exciting, Mark. It's your passion, I can tell. It's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and yours as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yours. I love podcasting. I really do. That's Christine Blackburn, by the way. And uh, she's joining us. I think this is your first official interview for Succotash. I think no. uh, you, you were on Mike you were on Mike's uh, on my mic when we were doing uh, the podcast festival, the LA podcast festival you know in Los Angeles, right? That's where we would hang out. 6 years in a row, something like that. Yeah, it was a lot. It was fun. We became friends right away. Um and you were very helpful in uh, dragging people over to my mic as I recall when I was set up in the the big room with all the podcasters it, it had to be kind of all in one room. Sure. And you would find guests for me, but uh, you have uh, a new podcast, which we'll talk about or soundcast. We call them soundcasts and Succotash called my life in three songs. <laughs> and that is starting in September. September 1st is the, is the first episode drops on September 1st. Well, you know what, since we're talking about it, let's talk about that first. And then we'll kind of talk about your other, your other soundcast, which we've featured before here on Succotash, but yeah. I would love to hear about my life in three songs. Okay. So my life in three songs is a podcast that I've been thinking about for over three years. And it is something that I have, like, it just has stayed on my mind. Like I, I, I keep trying to like tamp it down. Like, no, nah, don't worry about it. You know, just keep going forward with story worthy, but I can't seem to stop thinking about it. And my life in three songs is something I've been working on for years and I've been putting it off over and over because of different reasons I've put it off. But let me tell you about the show first. Yeah. It's comedians talking about the three songs that have impacted their life. Mm. That's it. It's a simple premise, but if you love comedy, which I do, and if you love comedians, which I do, then it's interesting to find out how their brain ticks and how, you know, where, who they are, like from the three songs that they choose really tells you a lot about their life. Mm. And so they come on the show and they bring up the first song and we talk about it and then we play the song and then the second song and we play the song. So we listen to the song together and we talk about the song together. Mm -hmm. And some of the caveats that held me back were that, you know, there, you have to have music licensing to use music on your show. I was, I was going to ask, well, how do you, yeah, how do you pull this off? Well, you could cheat and you could steal and take people's music and do your own podcast. But what's happening there is they could easily take you down and like take your whole show away and take your RSS feed away if you if you are using and stealing music. So there's no sense in starting a podcast, in my opinion, that you could could get shut down. But also, I'm not going to steal from musicians. Like, I love music way too much to steal from the creators and the artists. So um, Spotify does allow you to use their catalog, but there's a lot of caveats around it. For instance, it won't be on Apple Podcasts. It won't be on Stitcher or any other platform. My Life in Three Songs is exclusively on Spotify. Mm. So that's one caveat right there. Interesting. The other, yeah, the other caveat is that if you don't have Spotify Premium, 
then you're only going to hear 30 seconds of the song. And mm-hmm. those are the 30 seconds that I don't choose. <laughs> so that's a lot. If you think about just those two caveats, that's a lot to put yeah. all this time and energy into booking these guests and having these people on and doing all the research. And then, you know, people are only going to hear 30 seconds of the song. But then I realized that Spotify is massive. Yeah. Spotify has 80 million premium premium subscribers. Yep. So That's now it. when I think of that context, okay, I can work with 80 million <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> exactly. So I'm very excited. I've already recorded about nine episodes and this is just so dear to my heart. And it's starting, like I said, September 1st. And then the train is moving. And now we're talking about every week forever. Because as you know, Mark, in podcasting, you can't get fired. <laughs> that's very true. That's, and that's no, why you, Story you Worthy, only, my other only, podcast, Story Worthy, has been going over 12 years because nobody's stepping in to fire me. No, you can only fire yourself. I know. I often make jokes uh, when I'm doing my show about, you know, the, the networks asked me to, to wind it up and uh, you know, we got to, got to wrap this up. We have another show coming on. Right. But of course there's nothing. It's just me. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's okay. You got to treat it like a business and you know, you, every podcast starts from zero listeners. It doesn't matter who you are. You have no listeners at first. And then there's listener number one yep. and then two, and you build your audience. And we're, at, we're at 17. We have 17 <laughs> dedicated, dedicated <laughs> listeners after 11 so and a half years. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. And you'll probably be asked this for anyone who's talking to you from the press about this. What are your three songs? Oh, well, you know, it's so interesting because my three songs have been like, in stone like that's it these are the three songs and the first one is a neil young song called my my hey hey which came Mm -hmm. out on his 1976 russ never sleeps album or 1979 Mm -hmm. excuse me and my brother had that album and i just remember listening it to to the album on my brother's panasonic am fm stereo cassette player eight track player that had a turntable it was this awesome stereo And on the first side of Russ Never Sleeps is the song, My, My, Hey, Hey. Mm -hmm. And it's an acoustic version. And on the back of the album, the last song that bookends the entire album, it's a song called Hey, Hey, My, My. It's the same (laughs) song, but he switched around the lyrics and a few other things in the song. And I was 14 and I just couldn't understand how this happened. How does he do this? How can this be possible? And I remember a buddy of mine telling me because he's an artist and that made such a huge impact on me. Mm. Plus the song, my, my, Hey, Hey, and Hey, Hey, my, my out of the blue into the black, you know, it's talking about artists and their relevancy and how fleeting fame can be. And some people die famous like Elvis or Kurt Cobain. And, and in the song, he's saying it's better to burn out than it is to rest. Yeah. Because when you lose fame, it's even harder <laughs> oh, nice. than when you got the wow. fame, you know, because now you are irrelevant and you have yeah. to figure out how to live the rest of your life and nobody's looking at you. Yeah. So all of this culminated into really making an impact on me and really was one of the cement reasons why I even started my life in three songs. Mm. Get this, Mark, and you're going to appreciate this. When you upload your materials to Spotify in this music licensing world that I'm into now, you have to, you know, you put in the, the, the track with the vocals, and then you put on the song and you have to pull from, from Spotify's library. That's the only way you get the music. Yeah. Well, guess who doesn't allow Spotify to play their music? Who? Neil Young. Neil Young. That's right. That's right. I we, knew that. Yes. That's amazing. Because we actually, we actually sort of were supporting Neil Young and his decision to do that originally. Of course. And we, we who wasn't? Su- we pulled Succotash off of Spotify for about a year. And then we finally went back on. See, I, I totally hear you, but how did I forget? So now here I am, I'm launching the show in a week and I go to put my episode in and there's no Neil Young. (laughs) 
So I got to go back to the drawing board. I got to go back to 14 year old Christine Blackburn and come up with what else impacted me. And you know what? It really wasn't hard to do. Yeah. So what were those other songs? So the song, instead of my first Neil Young song, I chose Peter Frampton from Frampton Comes Alive. Mm. Again, a hugely impactful album from 1976. I was 10 years old and my brother had that double album, Frampton Comes Alive. And that album like knocked everybody's socks off. Oh, yeah. Came out in January of 1976 and it hit the top of the billboard in April. I mean, it was just like immediately a success three singles off the album and i chose the song show me the way mm. because that song you know had that talk box that he used yes. wah, 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 wah. That, yes. and that again you know that's art who thought of that you know what i mean he was using the talk box in a very popular way with his yeah. guitar and i hadn't heard that before so that was a very impactful song for me. Oh, nice. Thanks. Nice. And what else? Okay. The other song that, see, now people aren't even going to listen to my life in three songs. Oh, every, well, then let, let's leave it a mystery. No, I'll tell you. Let me just tell you one more. Okay. Mm. In, now I fast forward from 1976 to 1996. I go to the United States Peace Corps. And I'm in the kingdom of Tonga. And I'm only in Tonga for about two months when I get very, very sick mm. and I have to leave. So there's a lot of story right there. Yeah. But just to move it a little bit forward for you. Um, when I went to Tonga, I had five cassettes with me. You know, you have to be very choosy about what music you're taking to a remote, remote South Pacific island when mm. you're going to be there for two years. You got to be very choosy. And on that my Peace Corps experience, I took two Counting Crows albums or, you know, a cassette with Counting Crows, the first album, and then the second album were covering the satellites. And while I was in Tonga, like I said, I got very sick and it turned out I had cancer and I had to leave the Peace Corps altogether and oh surgery gosh. and chemo. Yeah, it was very traumatic. And that song, A Long December, will always mm. take me back to my experience in Tonga and the Peace Corps. Wow. Wow. I can see how that would affect uh, you and be so memorable as well. Yeah. yeah. Then, it's interesting. You know, I'm talking to these comedians and yeah, they all have every story is impactful. I mean, people associate music so quickly with memories, you know, and comedians, like, especially they're artists anyway. Yeah. And so there's certain points in their life that there's an epiphany or something changes. And then the music they're listening to at that moment, that's it. It's stuck with them. So once you kind of book somebody to do the show, how much time do they have to think about what those three songs are? That's such a good question. You know, it's up to them. I'll book like 20 or I'll, I'll email like 20 comics mm. and I'll say, this is what I'm doing. I'd love to have you on. Think about your songs and let me know when you're ready. And then they get back to me with three songs. And now what I do first off is I check that Spotify has those. <laughs> yeah. Because if it's a Neil Young song, they're not going to have it. Yeah. Oh boy. That was such a shock to me. That's something. Um, yeah. Because I was thinking you couldn't, uh, unlike something like a, a, a show where you're just sort of, conversing like we're doing here you can't kind of like spring that on somebody and say what three songs impacted you the most in your life <laughs> right you have to think about it for sure yeah yeah that's why you have do you can you think of any in your life mark or even a couple that might be your three songs yeah i think so uh i guess i would have to really think about i'm not a i'm not a huge music fan in that i i was in radio for a while and i had to know the music of the day but it was a you know, it was a top, not even a top 40. It was like an adult contemporary station in San Francisco. Oh, so man. It was, it was like, um, you know, things like Hall and Oats and stuff, yeah. stuff like that. It's like in LA, we have Coast 103. Yeah, it was sort of like And it turns that. to Christmas music on November 1st. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when you first asked me, so I, I'm just going to go with my first inclination. And um, it's not like a regular kind of song it was um they're coming to take me away by napoleon the 13th 
or 14th, wow. Napoleon the 14th, which was a novelty song. Wow. And I don't that know if you. The one, yeah, I do, but it was a scary song. Yeah, it was this whole thing about a guy who's insane uh, about their coming to take me away. But it was actually, I think it was actually his dog that was actually the singer of the song. I can't remember what the story was, but uh, there was something that was so crazy about that song. And I remember hearing it uh, when I was in junior high school, there was a guy on the radio that used to play comedy records. It was not like Dr. Demento. It was a, just a local guy. And I remember him, you know, pulling that out. And there was something about it that just was just really interesting that anybody could record something like this and it would get on the air. Yeah. And then when I was, a, when I was DJing years later, I was on a station, I used to play comedy st stuff. I was on the overnights at a station outside Chico, California. And I used to get requests for that song every night by students at Chico state wow. to wow. the point, to the point that the owner of the station had it removed from my locker when I wasn't there. And I came in one night and there was, a, you know, three or four requests for their coming to take me away. And I said, I, I'm sorry, I can't find it. I don't know what happened. So I called my buddy who was the program director at the time and said, where is my record? And he said, Oh yeah, the owner, he's a, you know, he's an insomniac and he listens to your show every night and he really hates that. <laughs> wow. That is so funny. What a great story. Yeah. Cause that song did impact your life. It did. Who's, who sang that? Uh, uh, well, it was Napoleon, the fort Napoleon, Napoleon, the 14th, I think was the artist's name. I can't remember who the actor yeah, were. Yeah. That was the name they recorded under. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Mark. That's funny. That's really funny. And I don't know if Spotify would have Spotify would have that, but I, can, you, can you sing it a little bit or a hum it or something? They're coming to take me away. Ha ha. They're coming to take <laughs> me away. And then it just, it's basically that refrain. And then he, he has a story that goes with it. I remember, um, but to me, it was like chasing each other around the yard in the dark, playing hide and go seek, and my brother screaming, "They're coming to take you away!" Ha ha, he he, ho ho. Yes, that was it. That was it. Ooh, it exactly. That's a nightmare song for me. How funny. Then there was another song that I actually impacted more than the song impacted me, which I can tell you about. Tell me. Which, which was Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Right. 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 That's but, Great example. By wow. Elmo and Patsy. But let me tell you how I impacted that song more than that. So I was still working at this radio station. I was the executive uh, in San Francisco. I was the executive producer of um, talk shows. And I was the producer of the Morning Guy show, the guy named Gene right. Nelson. Elmo of Elmo and Patsy, Elmo Shropshire, was a dentist in Marin County, California. And he and his little band had recorded this song. And he pressed like 500 records, these 45s. And he sent one to Gene because he was a big fan of Gene Nelson's show. So Nelson plays it one morning. It's going into Christmas. And the phones light up. People are going, what the hell is this song? And uh, so he goes, yeah. and some people just hated it. They're going, what is this song? And he said, well, okay, well, we'll take your calls. And if we get more calls that like it, then don't, we'll play it again. So we got more people that liked it. So he played it yeah. again. And then... Um, he abruptly goes on vacation and we played it for like a week. He goes on vacation and all of a sudden we start getting calls from other radio stations going, we keep hearing about this song from people, but we can't <laughs> find it anywhere. <laughs> and uh, so I go, okay, well, I'll play it down the line for you. because so they have these high quality lines that, uh, that radio stations had for interviews yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So I would play the record down the line and they would record it on their end and play it at their station. This was happening across the country, sure. these different stations. And that's, it turned into this hit and nobody had the song because Shropshire had 500 records. I ran into him years later. I interviewed him for a magazine article. He said, I only put out 10 of those records. The rest were all in my garage. They're probably still there. Oh. He said, and I had no idea how it became a hit because I never distributed the record until people started wanting it. And then we pressed it and, and started selling it. Yeah. But that, I, that it was because I started playing it for these radio stations. That is so great. See, that's what I mean. This is great. I love that story. <laughs> yeah, no, you get it, Mark. You get it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So anyway, let's talk about sort of how you got started. Because your first podcast, Storyworthy, like you said, it's been out there for 12 years, 12 years plus yes, now. Yes, yes, So what were you doing? Um, well, first of all, let's talk real briefly about Storyworthy. Because storytelling podcasts very popular with the moth and things like this. 
But what got you into doing StoryWorthy? Well, StoryWorthy started for me a long time ago. I'm going to say 2009. Basically, I was doing a lot of the moth storytelling nights, which is, you know, a night when you can go out to this a gig called the moth and they're going to select you could put your name in the hat. They're going to call 10 people to come up and mm-hmm. tell a true five minute story. And I used to do that all the time. And uh, out of the 10 stories you hear, two of them might be OK. The rest are going to be pretty bad. But that's OK, because it's hard to, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, to speak in, you know, it's hard to speak in public and tell a story and stuff. But for me, it was like when people were done telling their story, I always wanted to say, you know, and then what? And tell me more, you know, like I'm chasing them out to the parking lot. Hey, what what happened after that? And the host would just go to the next guest, the next guest, you know, okay, next story, next story. And I'm like, wait, stop everything. I have a question. And uh, so I started thinking that, that, so that occurred to me that, you know, wait a minute. Um, there's definitely more to storytelling than just mm. somebody saying it, you know? Yeah. And so at the same time, Adam Carolla got kicked off a of terrestrial radio and he went to podcasting. And I started listening to, to Adam Carolla in 2009. Mm. And then Mark Marin came out with his show also 2009. And I started thinking, wait a second, if these guys can do a podcast and I started looking into it, Jimmy Pardo had a podcast, Jackie Cation had a podcast, all these people I knew. And so I started thinking, wait a minute, I can do this too. And what if I do it about stories? And what if I narrow it down to just comedians who know how to tell a story, who mm. understand brevity? And then after their story, I talk to them after that. So not long form interview. Where are you from? Where'd you go to school? Where'd you grow up? Not that. Yeah. Just talking about whatever story they want to bring to the table. So some sort, some stories are very, you know, simple. You know, like my uncle made me a vandal, or I was at Woodstock, or you know, just you know, my father took out my tonsils. You know, very simple things. Yeah. But you can learn a lot about somebody by the story they decide to come. Just yeah, you can learn a lot about somebody by the story they decide to tell you, and then the story itself. So it's, uh, you know, yeah, very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff from that. And, and it's a great show, by the way, it's still Thank on. You. And we, we've, like I said, we featured it a number of times. And then um, you've, you sort of evolved that in not evolved because it's still around, but you've, you did, you start came out with story smash. Yeah. That's a game show. Which also game story show, yeah. based. Yeah. That's when uh, contestants spin a wheel and whatever they land on, they tell a true one minute story. So the idea there is that you can actually tell a one minute story uh, you could tell any story in one minute. You really can. Yeah. If you're you know, pitching to Hollywood. Me, oh, I don't have time to tell you. It's like, yeah, you do. Give me, give me, give me the story in one minute. That'll be enough. I'll get it. You will yeah. get it. Yeah. If you're pitching to a, a Hollywood executive, you better be able to tell a story in a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So uh, that's a really fun show that we do live. And, you know, then there's judges. We call them expert judges and they, tell you know then they critique the story but in a very light and funny way it's all uplifting it's all positive and it's freaking hilarious yeah we re- recently had uh blaine Capach on the show oh. who's oh, all, often been a judge for your story smash and he blaine was the- is a wonderful person extremely talented and he's been on story worthy at least 75 times <laughs> <laughs> right. And a judge for you as well. And he that's talks- what I mean. He is a judge. He's always a judge. Yeah. He's always a judge. Yeah. Because he's got this quick wit that's really unmatched by anybody yeah. else. And he was telling us, telling us about how much fun that show is to, uh, to be. Oh, on. that's nice. Oh, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Good. Yeah. So let's just, um, just a little bit talk about before you got into story worthy, what were you doing? Well, I mean, um, you know, I'm, 128 now. So I've, done, I've had a big life, Mark. I've, I've done a lot of things. You, you know, don't so. look over a, a day over 123. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I mean, like anybody, you know, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. I had a career as a flight attendant there for seven years and, um, you know, decided to come out to Los Angeles. I was, I wasn't even, I was 31 when I got here, you know, so I was already older, but see, if you're 19 and you come to Los Angeles, you're too old. Like you're always going to be too old. So don't even try to beat the clock. You know what I mean? (laughs) Exactly. So I love Los Angeles and um, I have a child and, you know, raised a child. Now they are 15. So that is a lot of time. Yeah. And you know, Mark, I knew I was only having one 
just like Blaine, Blaine has one. And, you know, I wanted to do it right and do it well. And that's been a wonderful experience. I so you're like. from, you're from Pittsburgh and, um, I believe this gentleman's been on your show, um, on story worthy. He's from Pittsburgh. He's a comic, uh, Frank Nicotero. He's one of my bestie friends. Yes, of course. Frank, Frank. and I were Frank and I worked oh. on a game show together. Street smarts. No, pre oh. street. No, this was, he was not host. He was a, oh. he was a segment producer hmm. on a game show that I think it got on the air after I was gone. And after he, he may have been gone too. It was called, uh, what was it called now? Game war. Game World? Game World. It was for the for the um, game show network. And it was supposed to be like, uh, we, we had to screen game shows and we were supposed to play winning moments from game shows. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it was like, so it was like a clip show. Yeah. Not, uh, not unlike Succotash. And my question to, to Sony, mm -hmm. who was producing it, was, well, what game show producers are going to give us the shows with the winning moment that's the that's the money shot for them right <laughs> why are they gonna give us those moments um but anyway so it was it was uh, i was the essentially the producer and yeah. frank was one of my segment producers and that's awesome would, and we would sit around and this was still vhs days sure so we, we had an office off the sony lot and we would spend yeah. all day just watching game shows wow that's so awesome not frank a surprise yeah, he's a wonderful guy. And do you know his cousin is Greg Nick? Greg. Yes. And that man has, you know, he's the entire uh what do you say? Walking special, Dead. Yeah. He yeah. did all the special effects on The Walking Dead. I mean, that man has had a heck of a career. Oh yeah. I remember when Frank moved to LA, he's like, I'm gonna live with my cousin for a little while. Yeah. You know, and he did, and then oh wow, what Greg Nicotero has done is unbelievable. It really is. It yeah, really very is. cool. So you were a flight attendant in Pittsburgh. Where uh, you grew up in Pittsburgh? I grew up in Pittsburgh. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, and I lived there until I was. Well, I lived in Pittsburgh uh, until I I was a flight attendant. So I was moving. A, I mean, I was traveling a lot, and I lived in Colorado for a few years. But I essentially was in Pittsburgh from you know when I was born until 30, essentially. Okay. So did you have any kind of sort of performance background in school or anything else? Yeah. You know, I'd done all the plays and musicals and talent shows, but you know, being a performer wasn't in the Blackburn vernacular. <laughs> I have four, four older sisters and an older brother, you know, that five siblings. And we all went to the same college because my father worked at Duquesne university in Pittsburgh. Oh. So we all went through Duquesne. And then all my sisters got married and moved to the suburbs. And this was clearly the path, Mark. Mm. This is what you do. Yes. You go to Duquesne, you graduate, you go have kids in the suburbs. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so I tried that. And then my first husband got another girl pregnant. Womp, Oops. womp. Ooh. Yeah. Womp, womp. Shattered that illusion yeah. of my family. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So I know, and that's something what so was, when what, I was what, 26. What were you studying at Duquesne? Just trying to get through school. I cheated. Yeah. I did anything I could to get out of it. And I did. <laughs> I started at 17 and I was out of college at 21. I, okay. I, I plowed through it, but my grade point average was like 2.7. You know, I wasn't, <laughs> I was just getting through. Yeah. And when it was time to pick a major, the, advisor was like what's your major and i'm like can i see the list you know like <laughs> what what did i do most of yeah and it turned out i did most of psychology you know okay like, oh god just a nightmare well that's funny though i mean it, to track that to story worthy and these other shows that you're doing uh well, I mean, not that there's a direct connection but the idea of psychology and what songs drove your it, it's almost like every one of these uh, pot, uh, sound casts that you're doing has a little bit of a psychological connection yeah. in it, which is all cool. these paths have definitely converged on storytelling and hosting because I really wanted to be an actress, but I realized when I got out here that a lot of talented actresses live here and also kids can act. So like, it's not that hard to act. And a lot of it is just random. And you could sit around and wait to be cast your whole life, or you could 
create something. You can yep. produce something, produce, make it happen, make it appear. And so I knew with all of my rocky roads before me that, you know, growing up in Pittsburgh, very poor and growing up and being in the airline, traveling around the world, then going to the Peace Corps, being a cancer survivor, all of these things culminate mm -hmm. into experience. And when you find somebody like myself with so much experience, I'm not competing with anybody else. I You cannot duplicate my life. Yeah. You, nobody is going to duplicate what I've been through. So for me as a host, I have a good sense of putting it all on the other person, hearing their story and bringing out the best in them. I am not at all in competition with anybody. So, you know, I don't know. I, I think that it, like I can host whereas somebody else might be a great actress, but they couldn't be a big host because they haven't led my life. Yeah. I yeah. can't be that good of an actress because I just don't have the patience to <laughs> wait around and get cast. I cannot do that. Mm. So these things do culminate. And I think artists and comedians and music, those three things go together very well, very well. And comedians want to be rock stars and rock stars want to be comedians. Hasn't that always been the truth? It's That's exactly right. Always, always yeah. been that way. Um, so again, let's tell folks uh, you're going to be exclusively on Spotify. My life in three songs. Yep. Exclusively on Spotify. I'm dropping three episodes on September 1st. Me, Wayne Fetterman and Adam Ferreira. And then we're off every week. Brand new episode on Thursdays. That's fantastic. Um, is there a way for me to get a clip that I can feature? Along? Actually, by the time. This interview drops with you. I think you will have debuted. So I will pull a clip. Um, Please do. Well, there's a trailer out now that'll fit oh. perfectly. Okay, great. I can email you the trailer. It's it's fast and tight. One minute. Terrific. That's great. Christina, it's great catching up with you. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, and Mark. You're a best, pro. Best of luck with the new show. Uh, I'm very excited to hear about it. And uh, I will, um, I'll make this uh, uh, promise to you. Uh, that I will review it for vulture.com's this month in comedy podcast. The next time I, I've already had to do this month, but for the next month, you will have been on for a few weeks and I will make sure that we get that covered. Mark, honestly, that means so much to me. Really. I really need eyes on this. I'm an independent producer. I'm yeah. not with a network. Spotify hasn't approached me with any kind of deal. I mean, I'm on my own. So that really means you. Much to me. You got it. Thank you. You have a great weekend. You too, friend. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks again to Christine Blackburn. And please do give a listen to her new endeavor, My Life in Three Songs, available exclusively on Spotify. So exclusive, as a matter of fact, that I couldn't pull down a clip of any of the first three episodes. I was able to have access, however, to the teaser for the show she mentioned. And here it is. Welcome to My Life in Three Songs. My name is Christine Blackburn, and I am so excited to share with you my brand new podcast exclusively on Spotify. Listen to comedians talking about three songs that have impacted their lives. Not necessarily their favorite songs, but songs that are attached to strong memories that paint a picture of their life. And I can remember being a little kid and opening up this this album and then this song became something that as a teenager was like an anthem to me and i just remember so vividly the song coming on and that's where i find myself on i see myself on the road just very i, I felt very vital at this point in my life these songs are very important to me at certain points in my life i'm 10 years old my brother buys this album turns out this is now, I've adopted them as my favorite band. Check out the show on Instagram and Twitter at My Life in Three Songs, and of course the website, MyLifeInThreeSongs.com. My Life in Three Songs is exclusively on Spotify. Rock on. We have clickable links to all three of Christine's shows, Story Worthy, Story Smash, and My Life in Three Songs up on our home site at SuckatashShow.com. Plus the links to her socials on Twitter and Instagram. So check them out. Speaking of Twitter and Instagram reminds me that we have one last stop before Bill Haywatt tells you to rate and review our show. And that stop is, of course, the Tweet Sack. What Tweety is trying to tell you is that if you drop our at Succotash show handle into your socials on Twitter and Instagram and I see it, we will return the favor by dropping your handle right into this feature here. 
It'll sound remarkably like this. Married Crazy and Podcasting. Salty Language Pod. Trashy Podcast. Erica, 929. I Shake My Head with Lisa and Sam. John Burns. Tiger Stripe 202. The Jock Doc Podcast. Hunter Block. The D-Head Factor. Dana Gould. And Bernice Bates. Don't be afraid to get yourself or your soundcast mentioned in the tweet sack just by tweeting or insta-ing. Is that how it goes? Inst- Instagramming? Inst- you could, uh, our handle, put our handle, at Suck It's Hash Show, in your tweets or Instagram posts. And if I see it, we'll include it the next time around. All right, I can take a hint. I'm out of here. Don't forget to grab Epi 321 next time around in this very same feed with Tyson Saner bringing the soundcastic magic right to you. And remember, if you happen to be out on the open plains, running some cattle from Texas to Wyoming, and Cookie the Grizzled Cook on the chuck wagon happens to ask if you've heard anything good lately, won't you please pass the succotash? You've been listening to Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast with your host, Mark Hershaw, brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuckatashShow.com, on Spotify, on Stitcher, on iHeartRadio, on YouTube, on SoundCloud, and wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suckatash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at marc at succotashshow.com or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Succotash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Suckatash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Suckatash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.